Now let's learn how to examine a painful shoulder and we'll go through inspection, special tests uh, and uh, try to see uh, where the pain is coming from. So <clears throat> when we start, uh, the most important point in the history is where is the pain? For example, if the pain is more posteriorly in a middle-aged guy or a young guy at some particular spot, it's localized and if you do an MRI you often see sometimes there is a cyst in the spinal glenoid notch with a paralabral cyst which lodge at the notch and compress the suprascapital nerve causing a lot of shoulder pain and weakness of the interspinatus now if the pain is more superiorly okay, and you ask the patient to localize the pain and if he does so as the AC joint and you do an MRI x-ray you sometimes see fusion because of EC synovitis and that is the cause of pain which is coming from the EC joint. Now anterior painful shoulder is very easy to diagnose since this is because of a supraspinatus structure. Now if the pain is more diffuse all around the shoulder and steadily and low down also this is typically coming from a capsulitis now when you see a shoulder all exposed from front and behind sometimes you see a muscle atrophy in the infraspinatus fossa uh, this denotes a long-standing infraspinatus rupture or, or a massive cuff tear so now let's move on to physical examination this will be in two stages you're going to examine the range of movement and the muscle testing of uh, individual uh, shoulder muscles so and when you move on and do the range of movement examination I want you to do this I want you to always do active passive movements and compare with the normal size so you're going to record elevation in degrees then external rotation 1 with elbow by the side external rotation 2 with elbow at 90 degree abducted and internal rotation everything is going to be active passive and compared with the other side so let's see the elevation first now I ask the patient to actively just elevate the hands up as much as he can and see if both are identical or there is some difference or just try to see if uh, it's restricted or not now here it's 180 degree normal next you go for external rotation with the elbow by the side of the body this we are calling here ER1 so the elbow is adducted and the patient is asked to external rotate the forearm and you see if both the sides are same or not this is ER1 now we move on to ER2 how we do the ER2 is with the elbow abducted at 90 degrees and then ask the patient to external rotate. Now we want to see if both sides are identical or not. 90 degrees is normal for many people. So we move on to internal rotation. So we ask the patient to reach out at their back with the hand, with one hand first and then with the other hand and then you see here if both are identical or not like here if she could take her hand up till t7 or even further up and that is quite normal and then you uh, see it's identical with the other hand or not or at this stage you should be very clear in your mind that if the movements are restricted or not because the diagnosis of capsulitis can be made after this examination if uh, your shoulder movements are passively restricted or not for example in this gentleman there is a restriction of both active and passive movements as will be seen here this guy here has a restriction of uh, forward elevation and also external rotation this limitation is both active and passive as we see here so he cannot take his hand beyond 90 degrees active or passive 
and his external rotation is also limited. It's around 20 to 30 degrees and the other normal side goes to 50 to 60 degrees. to special test for individual muscles now we are testing the rotator cuff muscle so first we will go for the joke test for the uh, supraspinatus for the supraspinatus testing we will see what we do is we hold out the hands of the patient in the plane of the scapula abducted at 90 degrees then we ask the patient to push up while we push down and we check for the power and pain this is positive if the uh, patient feels a lot of pain or he is weak like in this patient this is a positive test for uh, supraspinatus the patient's movements have been checked already and then he holds his hands out he reducted in 90 degree in the plane of the scapula and then I'm pushing down and the patient is pushing up and I see that he is very weak also he's painful so that is a positive, a positive test for supraspinatus next we go on to test the uh, supraspinatus in a different way so this is a chronic pseudoparalysis in a massive of tear so this patient presented with active elevation of only 20 to 30 degrees however her passive elevation was full okay so we see she can only lift up till 10 20 degrees or 30 degrees but passively you could raise her hand up And then we ask her to external rotate which was actively only 10 degrees passively was full now we'll test the infraspinatus muscle so what we ask the patient is hold the hand 90 degree flex at the elbow with the elbow by the side of the body the patient is asked to external rotate the arm while you push and resist so you check the power of external rotation so here patient is the or the subject is trying to external rotate while you are trying to resist so we can see if this is painful or weak and we will see this in a patient so this patient had a infraspinatus rupture and we will see how the testing went so he was asked to uh, um, to go for external rotation while we resisted and we will see his external rotation was so weak so here his hand is air held by the side of the body and he is asked to external rotate while we resist and we see that he is very weak next we are going to test the teres minor muscle so the hand is abducted and then external rotated patient is asked to external rotate more while we resist and we check for power and pain again so this uh, is the testing for teres minor muscle with the arm abducted okay let's move on to the subscapularis testing first test is the belly press test patient hand is laid flat with wrist, elbow and hand in one same line and then patient is asked to press his or her belly against resistance uh, as you are going to see here so the patient is trying to press her belly while we are trying to resist so we can check the power of uh, subscapularis and if it is painful or not
now you see here in a patient who has a complete subscap rupture is not able to take the elbow arm forearm wrist and hand in one same line and this denotes a complete subscap rupture so when he cannot take it at one straight line that means he's not able to internal rotate so we'll see the video also that we have asked the patient to take the elbow forearm wrist and hand in one same line and try to press the belly so this he is trying to take it in one uh, straight line but he's not able to do so so that means he cannot internal rotate you see it's always there at an angle at the wrist that means uh, the subscapularis is ruptured the next test for subscapularis is the burgos lift off test the patient is asked to take his hand back and rest it at his back and then asked to lift the hand off the back and you can check the power also and see if it is weak or not so normally the patient can't lift the hand off the back if they cannot do so it's a positive Gerber's test and this is also positive in case of subscapularis rupture so a uh, DD for weak rotator cuff testing would be the following uh, rotator cuff tear very likely massive bursitis also sometimes gives rise to similar symptoms a supraspinatus calcification which is massive can also present in the same way a greater tuberosity fracture which sometimes is not evident on x-ray a uh, suprascapular nerve compression also which causes a supraspinatus and infraspinatus weakness and a brachial plexus neuritis really also presents like this with the weakness of the shoulder muscles especially supraspinatus infraspinatus deltoid and other muscles may be involved depending on which nerves are involved in the brachial plexus neuritis so in the end you should always palpate the ac joint and compare it with the other normal side to see if it is tender more tender than the other side uh, which uh, makes a diagnosis of ac joint arthritis synovitis or some ac joint pathology thank you